Hey guys, Crypto Lazy Geek here and welcome back to the channel. It is the time of the year wherein we have like the largest astronomy and astrophotography exhibits, conferences, whatever you want to call them in the United States. They're uh, NEF 2024 and uh, NIAIC. 2034 as well. Nyek is currently in progress uh, yesterday and today as far as I know and Nif will be this weekend on the 20th and the 21st and so that's where astrophotography astronomy makers they showcase their new equipment sometimes they even announce entirely new products which is pretty cool and a few of those like newly released or somewhat recent products have caught my eye as I was browsing through what was getting uh, shown or announced at the conference and some of them look a bit bonkers like April Fool's type of stuff. <laughs> I'm looking at you ZW uh, but we'll have a look in this video uh, don't worry. Anyway what caught my eye on the products being announced uh, I've restricted it for now to just maybe around three 3.5 products and there's also another product that I haven't seen mentioned yet that was presented at the CP Plus Expo in Japan like a couple of months ago that looked awesome and I don't see it at NIF or uh, NIAIC. So I want you guys to ask Skywatcher about it if you're there physically. So uh, please ask. Okay, first product that caught my eye is this well, well named Smart Eye uh, digital eyepiece from Pegasus Astro. So digital eyepieces are nothing new, right? They're basically just a, a camera that, you know, uh, we say is an eyepiece. But this one is very interesting because it has two things. It has if I look here, a nice square sensor. Hmm, square sensor, does it ring a bell? Yes, it is the IMX533, which is a good sensor in there. And on top of that, it can display the images that the sensor is capturing with some live stacking and light accumulation like that within the eyepiece as like a screen so that instead of looking at the results on a smartphone which for outreach can be a bit weird for the people watching like is the image really coming from the scope you show them like in the eyepiece and uh, they get more details than just this, like faint fuzzies that you get with normal purely visual outreach but you still get the experience of looking down into the uh, the eyepiece which is more authentic and of course you can use the 533 sensor like as a normal astrophotography uh, sensor and like I believe store the subframes and stack them as you wish later on so it is not purely for electronically assisted astronomy although it is close to it and it's basically like a, a half of a smart telescope right you you provide your own optics and tracking system and then the eyepiece is the smart element of it which is actually pretty cool because one of the big drawbacks I've seen with smart telescopes up to now is that they don't track very well or and they often aren't able to track equatorially so with that you have like half the smart telescope it's kind of a it's kind of a cool concept I kind of like this actually and of course it also has like an important feature which is like a diopter adjustment uh, which means that people with like uh, myopia or just light astigmatism in addition to myopia can use this eyepiece without requiring eyeglasses which is pretty uh, pretty important but that was like a cool little thing uh, that said I haven't seen any mention of a price on this so how much does it cost I have no idea uh, so the cost will be like I think the determining factor of how well uh, it will like be received I think by the community so that's one thing that I was looking at and that looks pretty cool not specifically astrophotography but I think it's a cool innovation you know it's a nice gadget that shines okay so that's one thing and then we go to uh, something that is what I've been waiting for Skywatcher to do which is strain wave gear mounts or harmonic drive mounts from Skywatcher. We have tons of pictures actually courtesy of First Light Optics. Thank you so much First Light Optics. And we can see here we have the Skywatcher Wave 100i and you can see it has like one dovetail at the top here but also one dovetail at the bottom so it can be uh, used as a dual saddle kind of system and Skywatcher USA actually released on their Facebook uh, this image of it with like a tiny telescope mounted on this tiny mount mounted on a tiny tripod um, does it resist wind and <laughs> that remains to be seen but it is a pretty cool picture and they also have a picture of this thing the wave 150i which seems to be the big brother and this one is holding my uh, current main imaging telescope the quattro 150p although i am testing another telescope from apertura 
which is also a 150 millimeter uh, Newtonian. So let's make sure to subscribe to the channel if you want to see my review once it comes out. While you're there, like the video, leave a comment, and if you're planning on buying anything, use any of my links down in the description first, and that will help the channel. And you can see from courtesy of First Light Optic, we have a, a separate view of this uh, little uh, 150i mount, which looks very interesting because it seems to have like through the mount power, like a DC output there, and through the mount, no, this is declination. So I'm not sure exactly how it's gonna work, but it looks very interesting. It is a natural evolution for Skywatcher. And if anything, I think they're late to the game, but I'm very happy to see more competition, more mainstream competition in the game, right? We have tons of smaller makers. I presented Warp Astron. There's like Meow Astro. There's of course Ioptron. And then there's the elephant in the room, like the AM5 and AM3 from ZW. So it's good to see something more coming to the table for the train wave gear mounts which in my opinion are game changer and first light optic also uh, took a picture of the specifications of those mounts so they both work in equatorial and azimuth modes which is really good they both have both wi-fi and bluetooth a pretty cool feature in that they have a uh, red led backlighting for the uh, bubble level and the latitude scale when you're doing your polar adjustment and your tripod leveling so that's i've never seen that but it's a good idea because it's difficult to see in the dark they do have a right ascension a power off braking function which is something that's important for strain wave gear mounts with homing sensors so they will be able to, re to remember a home position and go back to it without fail. And we can see the specs there. The uh, payload capacity without counterweight is 10 and 15 kilograms and with counterweight 15 to even 25 kilograms. That's quite a lot. So uh, for uh, a head only weight of 5.8 kilograms or 4.3 kilograms for the smaller one. So very good to see a new offering there from a major brand. I'm looking forward to seeing how well those mounts will perform. Although it is nothing revolutionary, it will be interesting to see whether they actually have like through the mount kind of cabling as like the ports seem to imply, but they maybe not. Uh, we'll see, fingers crossed. Because I think that would be like kind of a first for small harmonic drive or strain wave gear mounts to have like through the mount cabling. So we shall see that could be a cool innovation. Okay, now let's go to the one that everyone is waiting for. I, I'm still not sure if it's a real product. I mean, they have videos of it, they have pictures of it. They're like at the, at the expo. So it's there, it's real, but I, I'm still not convinced it's real. It is the ESI 2600MC Air. And this is basically an ASI 2600MC Duo, so it has both a main imaging sensor and a tiny guide sensor on top of it. I'm actually testing that specific camera, not the Air, the Duo, right now. Uh, so again, subscribe to the channel if you don't want to miss my review of that when it comes out. But yeah, it's that camera, and then it's merged with an ASI Air Mini. So the ASI Air control system is like built into the camera. And so you can see it has this antenna, so you get the wireless signal. It has four USB ports at the back that you can install, attach to like your mount to control your mount or your focuser to control your focuser. And you don't need any cable for your guider because it's in camera. You don't need any cable for your camera because it's in camera. Oh my word, this is a bit ridiculous. And we also seem to have like three DC in slash out ports. So that means that one would be used to provide power and the other uh, two would be available for powering your equipment. So yeah, it's, uh, it's very interesting and it is really for those who know that they will only use ever ESI uh, ZW equipment. Because, okay, taking a step back, this means we've merged the ESI Air, so the ZW control center that only supports ZW camera and ZW focusers. And now it's inside the, uh, the camera, which means, which makes me wonder a lot of things. I do not see a USB 3 input there. So the camera seems to be unusable with any other control system. I mightn't be wrong, but that means that it's, if you buy this camera, you have to use the SIR that's inside it. You cannot use anything else to control this camera. So you have, absolutely have to buy an EF if you want autofocus. So this is intensifying the lock-in and it's also 
making it weird because if you get an upgrade, an external upgrade to the ASI Air, and you want to take advantage to it, of it, you have to buy an entirely new camera. Uh, although, I mean, the SI Air as it is with the current soft uh, hardware, it works really, really well. So ZW is probably expecting that there won't be too many updates to the underlying processing hardware, like in the near future. But still, it's a, a, an astrophotography camera that I would expect to be using for years and years. So... I'm conflicted. This could be great for beginners. They buy the camera and then they can control everything. It's pretty cool. They don't even think, need to think about a control center. It's part of the camera. But this is something where I'm conflicted. Okay, so enough time spent on this like kind of Franken, Franken camera, I guess. Uh, let's look at something else, which is something that is not at Nyeik. I actually asked uh, Nico from uh, nebulaphotos.com and he told me it's not uh, there and he will actually ask, uh, ask Skywatcher um, about it and I'll be very interested to, to learn about it. But this is this thing here. This was presented in February in Japan. Honda's advanced camera, the HAC125. Okay, let's look at more pictures because look, look, there's a camera at the front. But the camera is a small camera, and yet so the, the scope looks very small as well. So it looks like a 5-inch Hyperstar-ish kind of thing. What the heck is this? Okay, but fortunately, we have some more pictures from back in February. Uh, in particular, we can see we can collimate the primary mirror. And if we look at the front, we can see that the aperture is 125 millimeters. And the focal length is 250 millimeters. So we have an F2 telescope slash lens with the same focal length as a red cat, but it's like six times faster than a red cat. And as this comment makes it very, uh, very obvious, like, okay, you, you, you're able to collimate the main, the primary mirror, but like, it's gonna be at F2. <laughs> Collimation at F2 is gonna be crazy. Now, why? Don't they have this super sexy, tiny, little, super fast telescope slash lens at Nyeik? And will they have it at Nif? Hopefully you will learn more, but uh, I'm excited about this as well. And I'm disappointed that we don't see it in the United States, at least not yet. Okay, and that's it for what stuff caught my eye. Is there anything else that you think I should be looking at that is being revealed or has been revealed recently in terms of cool, innovative, or different astrophotography equipment? Please let me know down in the comments, like the video, subscribe to the channel. If you're planning on buying anything from sh shops like High Point Scientific or Agena or even Amazon, if you do so after clicking the links down or right on the description, this will help the channel out. So thank you so much. And if you're feeling super generous, you can join my channel as a member. There's a join button next to the subscribe button or join my Patreon link again in the description. You guys truly really make the channel possible. Thank you so much. But more important than all of that, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget whenever you can to look up at the stars and I'll see you next time.